Friday, December 8th, 2023, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at the dollar, uh, but not just the dollar, uh, but all fiat currencies and how I think uh, the Hemingway moment is uh, fast uh, approaching. And uh, before we do, though, I like to uh, let you know that um, with Christmas coming, I think the Dirty Man Safe would be a, a great way to uh, gift uh, a loved one. And, and why is that? Well, because it's a very efficient way of keeping your valuables safe. And uh, yes, if you use my uh, promo code Maneco10, you'll get a 10% uh, discount. All, all the details are below in the description. So what are some of the testimonials here? Uh, well, let's have a look. Howard, Maneco64, and Rafa Faber. Thank you. I, I have one. Perfect. Dan K. Arrive quickly. Good, good design. Very solid. Comes with everything you need. I'm happy with it. I buried it and it works great. So so there you go. Uh, Consider the dirty man safe. Maybe not just uh, as a Christmas gift, but also for yourself if you're concerned about keeping your valuables safe. Uh, and the other thing I would say, um, <laughs> this morning I uh, poured my coffee into this mug here, and uh, a lot of you will probably remember uh, Billy. Uh, and uh, I designed this mug years ago, even before the silver squeeze. And uh, Billy was a wise dog. He said, snore on and keep stacking. And why stacking? Well, because stacking is not really buying paper uh, instruments uh, that have uh, exposure to gold or silver. Stacking is buying the real thing. Uh, just like the central banks of the world are doing, uh, you can bet the central banks of the world, uh, they don't buy COMEX contracts. And I'm going to show you here that uh, that's what they're continuing to do, especially the ones that are moving away from the dollar, which we're going to look at uh, later on. As you can see here, Tavi Costa just uh, tweeted out yesterday, central banks are in pace to buy over a thousand tons of gold again. I mean, last year was a record uh, amount of gold that they bought since the Bretton Woods Agreement was uh, signed <laughs> back in 1944. And again, uh, they're uh, on course for another record. So, yeah, believe me, they're, they're not buying ETFs uh, or they're not finding exposure in the paper market. They're buying real physical gold. And I think... Uh, <laughs> it's the same thing that we should do. Uh, and I've been doing, of course, since 2002. And if you're interested, many people ask me, where can I get gold? Well, I have three affiliates, uh, one in the UK and two in the US. All the details are below in the description. So enough of that now. And um, back to the dollar and to the Hemingway moment, uh, I'm sure... A lot of you will be familiar with the, this quote, but I'll bring it up anyway. Um, Ernest Hemingway, of course. And someone asked him, how did you go bankrupt? Uh, Bill asked. Two ways, uh, Mike said, gradually and then suddenly. <laughs> That's from Ernest Hemingway in, in his 1926 breakthrough novel, The Sun Also Rises. So we often hear, of course, that uh, countries don't go bankrupt, or especially the United States, because it has the reserve currency, and it uh, can just print uh, currency out of thin air, like Greenspan said a few years ago uh, on an interview. Um, I think it was on CNBC. <laughs> and at the time, uh, one of the White House uh, economic advisors by the name of Austin Gol Goldsby was sitting next to him and he was looking at him like this, you know, and, and uh, the Austin, Austin Goldsby now is, uh, I think he's a governor for the Federal Reserve Board. So, but uh, the way really 
countries go bankrupt and their currencies go bankrupt is that it be, they be, the currency becomes worthless because uh, countries and central banks have control over the currency. So the more they issue it uh, relative to how the economy is performing, the, the more worthless it becomes. And we're seeing Argentina, of course, and many other countries like the, the uh, Lebanon and uh, Turkey, their currencies have become worthless. Uh, they've gone bust. And, and unfortunately, I think uh, the dollar is going the same way. And it has been going the same way, of course, since 1971. Uh, but uh, it's been very gradual. And it's been the, uh, the best, uh, the cleanest shirt you know, the best shirt in like a, a pile of dirty laundry, so to speak. But now with uh, uh, what I've been talking about for years now that the petrodollar is been challenged, uh, I think we're coming to a moment at where it could happen very suddenly. And, and why do I say that? Well, we're going to start with uh, something that happened in March uh, this year, and I think it's very significant. Because this is the 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 these are the two leaders of the most important nations in the BRICS block. Uh, they've been buying a lot of gold for over a decade. They probably have a lot more gold than um, is officially known. And uh, this is uh, President Xi uh, talking to Putin after they met. Uh, earlier this year in March uh, in Moscow, and this is she coming out of the Kremlin. So I'll play this for you. This is from <clears throat> MSNBC. So I'll pause here. This is the important part here. She's interpreter. We are now witnessing changes, the likes of which we haven't seen for 100 years. So what do I think these changes are? Well, I think it's the, the challenge to the United States and in particular the, the dollar or the petrodollar. And uh, I spoke about that yesterday, but uh, I have to speak about it again because something's happened uh, that's quite significant, I think, not just this in March this year, uh, but also, as you can see here, um, President Putin, uh, he went to Saudi Arabia and visited, uh, yeah, Mohammed bin Salman. Um, and uh, the Saudis even produced a six-minute video of Putin's visit, stark message to the U.S., its hegemony is finished. Um, so it's a six-minute video. I'm not going to play it, but it just shows how significant it is. Another thing that I saw this morning that makes this even more clear how Saudi Arabia is uh, moving away from the petrodollar to more of a multipolar world centered on Russia and China uh, is this story here. Uh, Saudi Arabia delayed Crown Prince's London visit before he, he hosted Putin. UK officials said Saudis ditched provisional plan for Mohammed bin Salman to visit UK as early as December 3rd. So, of course, the UK is not <laughs> the British Empire anymore, but it's uh, the United States' major partner. You have the uh, special relationship, of course. A and uh, I think this is quite significant. And this is uh, what it uh, says here. Senior conservative MPs said the proximity of the postponement of the Crown Prince's trip to London and Putin's visit raised questions about the strength of the UK's relationship with Saudi Arabia. Sir Ian Duncan Smith, former Tory leader, told the Financial Times that the recent postponement of Prince Mohammed's visit was a snub. So there you go. Um, the West is losing uh, a lot of influence, and that means uh, the, the dollar and you know, all the uh, Western fiat currencies and, and even uh, the currencies of Russia, China and the BRICS nations, they're going to suffer initially. But that's why they're loading up on so much gold, because they know what's coming. Uh, of course, gold is the anti-dollar. So this is the other interesting uh, post or tweets that I saw yesterday. And this in, is in relation to uh, President Putin's visit to Saudi Arabia. 
a couple of days ago. So uh, <laughs> they've uh, put here oil uh, deal and why gold? Well, this is the head of the uh, Russian Central Bank. So they compare this to um, to this deal. Uh, when Kissinger met King Faisal, uh, they had a deal for oil, uh, and it was called the petrodollar. It meant that the, the U.S. would defend the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia military, militarily. <laughs> it would help them build infrastructure, and the Saudis would sell their oil uh, in dollars and recycle those dollars into treasuries. But now all this is changing. Uh, this was 1974. This was 2023. So this is why I think this is huge. Um, I've spoken about the impact of this. Uh, all it will mean, of course, is there's going to be less demand for dollars, less demand for pounds. And, and I think uh, what uh, this signifies here uh this uh gold oil deal is that the, the major uh monetary asset that will be used to settle trades uh will be gold and why is that well because i think these countries have learned that uh politicizing or using a fiat currency as the reserve currency is always a bad idea because it can be used as a weapon. Gold, on the other hand, is um, is an honest asset. You, you can't uh, conjure it up out of thin air like you can with uh, fiat dollars, and you can't uh, increase spending uh, like the U.S. has been doing for decades, and that's why the U.S. is running uh, current account deficits, uh, trade deficits, budget deficits for uh, half a century because they're able to just print the currency. And I think uh, this will make things a lot more stable. It will be a, a system based on real, uh, real goods and real trade. Uh, and why gold? Well, because gold has been a monetary asset, has been money for thousands of years. And um, it's a political of course, there could be problems um, in relations between countries, but uh, gold uh, is neutral. Gold is not political. Uh, and uh, with the U.S. also sanctioning uh, countries so much uh, and the power of the fiat dollar, uh, these countries now want something different. And, and I think it's going to spread. And what that will mean, of course, is, uh, as I said, is higher cost of living in the West. And and these countries are prepared because they, they've been stacking <laughs> a, a, a lot of gold. And I actually think, and I, I'm just speculating, I, I think <laughs> that something big is going to be announced uh, early next year in relation uh, to uh, this uh, new trade kind of deal. Uh, how gold is going to become important uh, in this system as well. I, I'm not saying they're going to have a, a gold-backed currency. I'm saying they're going to use gold as a way to settle trade. And how that works is that if a country is running a surplus, let's say Saudi Arabia has a surplus of uh, rubles or you want, they'll be able to exchange that for gold uh, at the end of the year or at the end of the quarter. And... Uh, uh, the thing is, if uh, countries start printing too much money, they're going to run out of gold and people are going to realize that and uh, they're going to dump that currency. That's how it works. So as I said, uh, it's been a gradual process. Uh, the dollar, uh, you know, it's been up there, the, the major reserve currency. And, and now I think all of a sudden it's not going to be anymore. And uh I think a lot of people are going to be shocked. Well, I think 99.9% .9 of the people are going to be shocked. And why is that? Well, because the mainstream media, the mainstream press, politicians in the West, they haven't been talking about this. They've been trying to like keep you from looking uh, at this. They, they've been uh, probably thinking, oh, this will never happen. They've been complacent. And uh, it's only on uh, channels like mine and others that we've been harping on about this. I I've been talking about this for over six years, and, and people thought I was crazy. But uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, people are going to realize that maybe 
Maneco 64 or Mario and Echo uh, was not that crazy, nor other people as well who, who have been covering this, like Andy Schechtman and others. And uh, yeah, just a little anecdotal uh, evidence of this is I played golf the other day with uh, a retired fund manager uh, or wealth manager, similar to what uh, Clive used to do. And we we're talking about things and um, about gold. And he said, oh, yeah, I have exposure to gold through this fund. Um, and it wasn't even like an ETF. And I said, well, I think the only way to have exposure to gold is the real thing. Oh, he said, oh, really? Like physical gold? I said, yes. <laughs> he thought it was really strange. Uh, all he knew, though, was that gold had hit an all-time high. He was a nice guy, though. But, uh, you know, even uh, the professionals don't realize. That's what I'm trying to say here. So hopefully you have realized and you'll be prepared for this because it will be a very disruptive 2024, in my opinion, and thereafter. So... Let's uh, look at uh, quickly look at where the markets are this morning. Then, uh, of course, we got non-farm payroll at uh, eight thirty uh, a.m. Uh, Eastern time, or one thirty p.m. London, and that will be, of course, an, an important number. I, I, I saw the story about the Bank of Japan. I mean, I spoke about it yesterday, and uh, I, I, I mentioned the comment that uh, the BOJ uh, governor made. And uh, what the market took from that was that uh, they might raise rates uh, from negative 0.1 to zero or a positive rate for the first time in many years. Uh, so yeah, it says here, yen leaps to a three month high as traders bet on Bank of Japan rate increase. So this is not a surprise, but the surprise is that he could do it on December 19th. They thought he might wait till next year. Um, what do I think about the Bank of Japan and what they're doing? Well, they're a little late to, to the party. <laughs> they're starting to uh, tighten um, when the other central banks are actually finishing tightening. So it could be quite disruptive because uh, Japan is the financial system there is important to the Western financial system. And uh, if you want to find out more, I have a yen carry trade uh, playlist. Uh, have a look there. So back back to the markets. As I said, it's uh, around 8.30 a.m. London time. And why do I say London time? For those of you who don't know, because I'm in London anyway. Uh, we got spot gold uh, is pretty much unchanged at 2029. The high has been 34 and the low 26. So it's only been like an $8 range, which compared to uh, earlier this week, it's like a tiny range. Uh, I think the markets are just waiting for the non-farm payroll numbers. And uh, yes, I think it's expected to be 150,000. So if we have a very strong number, we could see uh, treasury yields uh, jump higher. We could see gold and silver come uh, a bit under pressure. And the other way, if we see a, a very weak number, something like uh, less than 100,000, we could see treasury yields, the 10-year yield, go further down and test 4%. And we could see gold maybe retest the uh, all-time, well, the all-time high previous to uh, this week, which is 2070. So that's how I see it. Uh, silver is pretty much unchanged, tra trading around 2380. High has been uh, 90 and the low 72. The uh, Dow futures down 10 points, NASDAQ down 100, uh, and the uh, S&P future uh, index futures down three points. Uh, Sterling is down a quarter of a percent at 125.63. Uh, the euro is down an eighth of a percent at 107.80. And the dollar is stabilized against the yen. It's unchanged at 144.23. Aussie dollar, uh, that's unchanged, 66.05. Uh, the dollar is down slightly versus the Canadian dollar, 135.88. 
and the Kiwi dollar is down a third of a percent at 61.47. Uh, WTI crude is up 2% or uh, $1.50, trading at 71. Uh, Brent crude is up 2% as well, trading at 75.70. Uh, platinum is up uh, just under 10 bucks, trading around 918. And high grade copper is up a third of a percent, trading at 381. And the 10-year uh, yield right now is at 417. That's up about five basis points. So with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good weekend. Take care. Bye.